Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy, and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for February 25th through March 3rd. Let's get started. The first thing we sold was a lot of six golf club head covers. We got these at a garage sale in a big bin of golf related accessories. We paid just two dollars for all of these. We actually got a lot more of these golf club head covers but a lot of them were really damaged and we just ended up either donating or throwing them away. But these we were able to salvage and we sold all of these for $20 best offer. We got positive feedback on these. Also in that big bin of golf accessories were some golf bag rain hoods. And that is definitely a bolo item. Just mentioning that as a side note because we sold both of those like the same day or the next day that we listed those. One of them was a brand name, and I can't remember what the brand name of it. It was maybe Callaway or Ping or something like that. That one sold for like $50. And then the other one was just a no-name, unbranded nylon golf bag, rain hood. That one sold for like $25 or $30. But both of those sold like immediately. So that is definitely a bolo item if you ever see those. They're just nylon rain hoods that cover up your golf clubs in the event that it rains, so be on the lookout for those items. Next up was a vintage lot of Polaroid cameras. It included all kinds of film items, bulbs, accessories. It was just a big lot of things that I had gotten at a garage sale. I had purchased a huge box of camera and cameras and camera accessories and this was kind of some of the leftovers from that box of items that I didn't want to list individually and so I just lotted all of this up together and my cost of goods on this I had listed in our spreadsheet is only 26 cents because I think I had paid ten dollars in total for that box and parted everything out and once I got everything parted out from the box, I, I somehow figured out that I'd only paid 26 cents for kind of these remainders. But I managed to sell this lot, and I can't remember exactly what was in it. You'll see in the picture over here, it was a bunch of stuff. This sold for $51.98. So I had a really good return on my investment from this, and a really good return on my investment from that box of cameras stuff. It was just a really good purchase. And I'll say overall cameras is a really good thing to pick up. Even if they're broken, uh, we sell a lot of cameras and usually have a really good return on our, on our investment from cameras. So that's also a good bolo item. Next up was a 25 pack of Savvy Disney Frozen temporary tattoos, like the Disney movie Frozen. And we had gotten these in the Goodwill bins. They were brand new in package. They sold for $9.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid $0.92 cents for those at the bins. We did get positive feedback on these as well. And temporary tattoos is another item that we always sell when we list it. These did kind of take a little while to sell, but we always sell temporary tattoos when we list it. It's just kind of a random little item that sells for not much money, but it consistently sells for us. So when we see them new in the package at a place like the bins or somewhere where we can get them really cheap, we'll pick them up. Next up was something that we would not pick up again if we saw it. This was a vintage 1995 lot of three Kellogg's plastic cereal bowls. And these were like Tony the Tiger, Toucan Sam, the Rice Krispies, Snap, Crackle, and Pop guys. The, this particular um, lot of cereal bowls, they were really yellowed and old looking, but we picked them up anyway because we were we bought in bulk at this particular garage sale. And so we just paid like a big bulk price for everything at the end. And ultimately, I had put that our per item cost for each item at this garage sale was $3.28. These bowls sold for an offer to buyer of $12.78, so not a great profit for this particular item, but this garage sale and whole turned out to be a really good deal for us, so that ended up working out. Next up was a J. Jill brand army green coat or jacket. 
it had a removable hood and a removable lining and the lining like turned into another kind of like fleece jacket. This jacket was really cool. It was like convertible in all these different ways. Had it been my size, I definitely would have kept it, but it was not my size. And I just don't think that, I think you had to kind of see it in person for it to really be given justice, but it did take uh, quite a while for it to sell. I just think that somebody had to actually go in and open the listing and see how cool it was to really decide to buy it. And that ultimately happened. Somebody bought it for $34.38 on offer to buyer. We had paid $7.57 for that at a thrift store, but we got that a really long time ago. So it took a long time to sell. We did get positive feedback on it, which I'm not surprised by. It was a super cool jacket. Next up was one of the vintage antique, actually this was an antique Bible that we got out of the recent storage auction purchase that we made. We bought a storage unit for just $75. We did a three-part series on it recently, so if you haven't seen that, just definitely check that out. You can see where we got the Bibles. I think that was in part one. This was a 1909 American Bible Society pocket size New Testament Holy Bible. This sold almost immediately for $32.99, which was our full asking price. And our per item cost from that storage unit was just 28 cents, so definitely worth it. Next up was a lot of shampoo and conditioner, brand new, sealed. The brand was Love, Beauty, and Planet. We got these at a garage sale just down the street from us. They sold for their full asking price of $23.99. We had paid just $2 for those. We got positive feedback on them. Next up was another item that we got from that recent storage auction purchase. This was a Shein Women's Black Rib Knit Lace Coquette Spaghetti Strap Bodysuit. And I used the word coquette to describe this. It kind of had that French made kind of look to it. That's a really good keyword if you ever have anything that looks like that. I definitely think that helped this to sell very quickly. This was one of the first things that sold from that storage unit. Despite it being a not so sought after brand, I think this definitely was a style and keyword that helped this item to sell. And I think that coquette is definitely a style that if you see it, that is something that sells very well. So this sold for $18 even on best offer and we had paid just 28 cents for that in that storage auction. Next up was another one of the antique Bibles from the storage auction. This was an 1893 Oxford University Press pocket size Old and New Testament Holy Bible. We got a whole Ziploc bag full of pocket size Bibles, so we still have several to sell. This one sold for its full asking price of $39.99, and we had paid, you guessed it, just 28 cents for that Bible. Next up was something that we got when we were doing retail arbitrage. We got this at Marshalls and Home Goods. This was a Fab Lab brand 20 inch brown plush stuffed organic Big Buddy Black Sheep toy. And we had received a gift card for this store. And so we went and decided to put it to use and tried to, you know, make our money spread as far as we could. And so we applied the gift card to this partially. This was in the clearance section. We got two of these actually. This is the only one that sold so far. I think this was $17 on clearance, but we did apply part of our gift card to it. So I have that we actually spent out of our pocket $7 on it and it sold for $40 even on best offer. Fab Lab is a good brand of plush to pick up. If you see it used, it will sell very well. And we did get positive feedback on that. Next up was a Yamaha 7.2 channel network AV receiver. It did not appear to have any wear and tear, but we didn't have the box that it went with. It seemed to be in a box of a newer model. And I think probably, honestly, what happened is somebody had purchased a newer model and then took their older model, which had like little to no wear, and put that in the box and returned it to the store, which is not a good thing to do. Don't do that but we had purchased a liquidation palette from B-Stock and that's where we got this item. So we listed it as excellent used condition because it we could not guarantee that it was new or new open box. We had paid $47.18 per unit from that liquidation palette and this item sold for $2.99.99. We got really excellent positive feedback. The buyer was so pleased with it. They said it seemed like it was in like new condition, so they were extremely happy with it. 
Next up was a Sega Sports NFL 2K game that we got out of a big lot of Sega Dreamcast games at a garage sale. This was one of the last ones that sold. We sold all of the rest of them almost immediately, of course. The sports ones always sell last. This sold for $8.48 on offer to buyer. We had paid just 72 cents for that. That was such a great buy. Next up was a vintage ceramic hedgehog. It was some garden decor that we got at an estate sale. This was really cute. It was about this big. And like I had mentioned in a previous What Sold video, we always pick up hedgehog stuff when we see it because hedgehogs are super popular and people like them. So this we paid $8 for and it sold pretty quickly for $45 even on best offer. We got positive feedback on it because he was super cute. Next up was a lot of seven packs of a variety of holiday luncheon napkins. They were all new in the package. I had collected them over various visits to the Goodwill bins and also just some various other locations like garage sales. And I think I'd gotten a couple also doing retail arbitrage in the clearance section. So I lotted all of them up together and just kind of made a variety holiday pack. And those sold for $18.99, which is our full asking price. We had paid in total for all of those napkins, $3.81. Next up was a Mattel Hot Wheels City Blastin replacement rig, and it was part of a toy set that would have had a tractor trailer and also some Hot Wheels cars with it, but we just had the front part of the truck. So we sold that as a replacement part. We got that in a thrift store toy bag. We paid just 19 cents for that out of the thrift store toy bag, and that sold for $10.38 on offer to buyer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a boys size 7 pair of elastic waist dress pants. We got this in an earlier storage unit that we had purchased for just $30 that was full of a lot of kids clothes. This was an unbranded pair of kids dress pants that I really questioned whether or not to list, but I figured somebody might be looking for a kids pair of dress pants and decided to list them. And we did only pay $0.24 cents for each of the items out of the storage unit. so. We had such a low cost of goods, I was able to list them for just like, I think $9.99. We ended up selling those for $9.28 on offer to buyer. And actually, you'll see what I had the list price for on the tile over here. And then we did an offer to buyer of $9.28. They purchased them and we ended up getting positive feedback on them and ended up making, you know, a decent profit on those because our cost of goods was so low. So that ended up being worth it. Next up was a pair of kids Juba Sports Snow Bib. This we got at a garage sale. We paid $3 for it and they sold for $20 on best offer. Next up was a pair of Gap Kids Boys Size 10 Blue Jeans. We got these at a garage sale for a dollar and they sold for $12 even on best offer. Next up was a Women's Etc. brand Ivory Open Knit cotton cardigan sweater. This is a really high-end brand that sold at like Nordstrom's, but unfortunately it just doesn't resell for that much. But I did find this in the bin, so I was able to get it for a really low cost, so I decided to pick it up anyway. We paid just $1.68 for this at the bins, and it sold for $44.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a really cool Victoria's Secret bralette. It had a dragon design on the back. We got this out of the storage unit that we paid $75 for, our most recent storage unit purchase. And this was one of the first items that sold. This sold for $24.58 on offer to buyer. And we had paid just 29 cents for this one. Next up was a vintage Eastman Kodak 8mm brownie movie projector. It did work, but I put read in the title because one of the functions of it, we couldn't get it to move in one of the positions and I wasn't sure if it just needed to have film in it to function that way or if it was actually broken. So I disclosed all of that and we had a video of it, you know, doing what it did and explained all of that. So I did sell it for a little bit lower price than some of the other ones listed because I was kind of unsure if it was like fully functional or if that was actually how it was supposed to work. 
but we did sell it for $50 even on best offer and we had paid $15 for that at an estate sale. Next up was another item that we got out of the recent storage unit purchase that we made. This was a Red Disney Store original Mickey Mouse backpack. It was in really good condition. This sold for $22.88 on offer to buyer and we had paid just 28 cents for that. Next up was another item from that same storage unit. This was a lot of three Nibiru and Go Sport ping pong paddles. They did have some flaws on them. You'll see that we have flaws in the title and we disclosed that. So we listed them for what we considered to be a fair price and they sold very quickly for $18.99, which was our full asking price. Sporting goods equipment is always a really good seller for us. So we will usually list it even sometimes if it does have flaws like this did. We had paid just 29 cents for those out of that unit. Next up was something called brass knock sets. These were something that are for archery. And we had gotten these at an estate sale out of a big box lot that we had gotten of pins and patches that were part of an archery club. And this was just a little baggie of knocks that were in that pins and patches kit. And the brand was Saunders and so they were, it was not a brand new package. Two of the, two of them were missing. So they did take quite a while to sell because they weren't brand new, but we did eventually sell them for $27.99. And we had paid only three cents for those because we had paid like $5 for that whole box of pins and patches in total. It was a really good return on our investment for that box because we still have lots of pins and patches to sell out of it. Next up was something that we got out of the recent storage unit purchase. This was a Pottery Barn silver bamboo easel back frame and we had paid just 29 cents for that and it sold for $19.78 on offer to buyer. Pottery Barn is almost always a Bolo great brand to pick up. Next up was an Arm & Hammer Spin Brush Pro set of two replacement brush heads. This is an item that is retired, discontinued, they don't make it anymore, and there are people who really love this toothbrush, so they're looking for the replacement heads for it, which they cannot buy in the store anymore, so if you ever see these at a garage sale or something like that, definitely pick them up. Worth buying. People are still looking for these replacement brush heads, which they can't get at, you know, CVS or Walgreens anymore. We still have one package of them left after this, and I think we had picked up maybe about five at a garage sale once before. So these we paid 50 cents for, and this package sold for $14 even on best offer. Next up was something that belonged to my daughter. This was a apple green and white rose petal flower girl or Easter dress. And this sold for $25 even on best offer. We had had this listed in our store for an extremely long period of time. So um, not, you know, not something that I would ever pick up or seek out, but we were just waiting for it to sell because it was something that already belonged to us. Next up was something that we had gotten in the storage unit and this definitely moved quickly. This is something that I would pick up if I ever saw it in the wild. This was the Columbia one size packable travel or fanny hip pack. It folded into itself to become a really small unit and then you can unpack it and use it as a fanny pack. So this we paid just 28 cents for and it sold almost immediately for $21.99, which was our full asking price. And we got positive feedback on that. Finally, I'll go over all of the collectible cards that sold from my husband's personal collection. This week we just sold two collectible cards and those sold for a total dollar value of $5.27. Sales are definitely down for us, just like they are for most sellers. I don't know what to attribute that to. We have heard that eBay is making some changes behind the scenes, which may be affecting some things. I don't know what to think about that. I do know that the economy is definitely playing a part in this, but we are definitely experiencing a major decrease in our sales. Um, today actually was a good day for us, so that'll come you know, in a couple weeks on our wet sold because we're a couple weeks behind. But, you know, I mean, we're just hoping that it will eventually turn itself around. Not much we can do about that, but thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you enjoyed this video by hitting the thumbs up button. 
And if you're not already subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button with the notification bells turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our future content. Stick around for the next video that's going to pop up over here, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side.